Yo, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy Naruto Explain here, bringing you guys another board to Naruto Next Generation discussion. And today, I want to talk to you guys about something that might be a bit controversial regarding the last few manga chapters, but it's something I do believe we need to at least discuss, which is now that Kawaki has gone down the path that he has, where he's not only going to destroy all the Otsutsuki who exist in the universe, hunting them down and taking the life from their bodies and likely killing whatever vessels they have, as well as kill any shinobi on Earth who try to prevent him from doing so, in particular, particular the Konoha Shinobi who are trying to both protect Boruto and rescue Naruto and Hinata, I wanted to bring up the discussion of given hindsight of what we know versus what we didn't know when Kawaki first came to Konoha, has Naruto not only made a mistake by bringing Kawaki into Konoha, but does Naruto also have blood on his hands? Now for full transparency, I've said plenty of times my favorite version of Naruto Uzumaki is a tie between 12 year old Naruto and the current 33 year old Naruto. So. I want my bias completely on the table here because normally I try to approach things from an unbiased perspective, give you both sides of the argument, whether in one video or in separate videos. But on the off chance that things do take a turn towards me overly defending Naruto or removing accountability from him, because for as much as I love Naruto, in particular the Hokage version, there is some blame at Naruto's feet. I at least want you guys to know where that's coming from. Secondly, I know the thumbnail probably went a little too far this time, but originally we planned to go with the murderer of trillions in order to make a meme out of what my guy ABD and NC Hammer just did with going over the kill counts in Naruto where they counted up all the different people who died. I wanted to say, hey, Naruto killed trillions, baby. <laughs> but if you pay attention to the thumbnail, you can see Kawaki's Karma Seal and Ninja Tag. So jumping right into it, let's look at the case of why Naruto does indeed have blood on his hands following the events of the last two Boruto manga chapters. However, in order to fully understand why this is, we have to go back back and look at what I refer to as the original sin by Naruto. And despite what the Boruto haters say, that original sin is not busting a nut inside of Hinata to create Boruto, but rather it's the moment that Naruto decided to allow Boruto to kill Momoshiki. Many people mark this moment as a turning point in the series because Momoshiki chose Boruto to implant that karma seal onto just before he got hit with the killing blow because like Ishiki needs to escape the death that was coming for him and Boruto was right there to be used as the closest person near him to implant the karma seal and roll the dice as to if he was compatible or not. In a Naruto novel, we learn that both Naruto chose to allow Boruto to give the finishing blow to Momoshiki because he wanted Boruto who, despite being a genius, still felt the need to use ninja tech and cut corners for attention. Naruto wanted Boruto to experience using high-powered ninjutsu so that it would motivate him to work hard to acquire that power on his own, with Naruto adding his own chakra to Boruto's Rasengan. We all also learned that following what happened in another Naruto novel, that Sasuke and Naruto both felt some regret in having Boruto anywhere near that battlefield. Sasuke for taking Boruto with him and Naruto for even allowing him to strike down Momoshiki because Boruto had a mark on his hand which at the time neither of them knew was called a karma seal yet or that Momoshiki's DNA was being extracted into Boruto's body. Had this never have happened, there's a strong chance that Momoshiki wouldn't have placed the karma on Boruto because Boruto wouldn't have been there to be the closest one to him at the time. It very likely would have been Naruto who got the karma, so the same issue of Momoshiki reviving, it would still be an issue, but at the very least, it wouldn't be Boruto at the risk right then and there. However, regardless, since it's a lose-lose situation, Boruto now had the karma seal and his genetics were being rewritten from human to Otsutsuki with each passing moment, which is ultimately the reason why Kawaki chose to kill Boruto for a second time and is attempting to try and carry out that mission now, because he's on a genetic level and Otsutsuki, and he's also the container for Momoshiki's soul. However, taking a step further, if we go back to Boruto chapter 26, Shikamaru directly tells Naruto that he objects to the idea of keeping Kawaki inside the village because it puts the village at risk because he'd be a magnet for Kar and Kawaki being a spy couldn't be ruled out. However, despite Shikamaru's initial objections and even the other Kage initially being unsure of the idea of Kawaki not being in confinement and instead being allowed to roam free under Naruto's watch, Naruto continued to play the I was a Jinchuriki card and he got his wishes granted and we saw in that same chapter Naruto wasn't above powering up into a six pass chakra mode to display his power as a warning as well as to get Kawaki to cooperate with him and that absolutely worked. Sensing Naruto's power for a time and thinking that he was stronger than Jigen made Kawaki realize that running wasn't an option. It was the only way to force Kawaki to set aside his initial distrust of Naruto showing that he has even more power than he's revealed but he won't 
won't ever use it against Kawaki as long as Kawaki is a threat to the village. This is important to keep in mind as we look at the manga version of the story because we have patterns of Kawaki dealing in absolutes and we know the one thing that gets through that thick skull of Kawaki is the word power, seeing power, being in power. It's the one thing he understands because he's been nurtured for most of his life to understand the position of the powerful versus the powerless. However, once Naruto used Baryon mode against Ishiki and pushed Ishiki closer to the limit before Naruto was stomped out of Baryon mode, Naruto lost the power of the Nine Tails. He very likely lost the access to the Chakra of the Nine Biju, and he found himself in a position where he no longer had the power to keep check on Kawaki. He was one Kawaki power up away from being surpassed, which is exactly what happened. Kawaki regained the power of Karma and saw firsthand that there were limits to Naruto's power despite Naruto never raising a finger in combat because he saw despite Naruto's power he couldn't do what needed to be done for Boruto which in that case was actually kill Boruto. One could argue that if Kawaki begins to go on his killing spree during the time skip because he's unable to kill Boruto and if Kawaki ends up spilling the blood of Konoha Shinobi trying to prevent him from killing Boruto one could argue it's Naruto's fault. He allowed Kawaki into the village. He became the source of Kawaki's obsession and is part of the root for Kawaki's desire to take down the Otsuski, with the other part being Kawaki understands that Otsuski must be stopped before they ruin any more lives. It's easy to say that Naruto Uzumaki has opened up Pandora's box and that the rest of the world, potentially the universe that has Otsuski in it, are going to have to pay the price for what he did. However, just because you can make the argument, should you actually make the argument? Initially, when Naruto lost Kurama, my stance was that everything that happened following that moment, it was on Naruto Uzumaki. But as I reread Boruto's manga for some videos that are coming up later in the spring, in the summer, I found myself moving the blame off of Naruto for whatever came in the future with Kawaki. It was an impossible scenario, a lose-lose from the very start. As previously stated, either Naruto himself or Boruto, they were going to end up with the karma. So the Momoshiki threat, it was always going to be there to some degree. With Kawaki, it was just as Naruto said in Boruto chapter 26. He was the only one in the village strong enough to deal with whatever enemy was coming for Kawaki. After Team 7 remarked that whoever destroyed the Ninja Tech puppets that they couldn't put a dent in and Konohamaru struggled against. Konohamaru saw a fatigued Kawaki fight against Goro. His immediate thought was that this battle had progressed up to a level of an S rank, which in the Boruto era, an S rank level is that for an elite Jonin all the way up to a power that requires one of the five Kage to intervene. Naruto read Konohamaru's mission report. We learned as much in the Boruto manga, which means he knew about the mysterious mass fighter in Kashin Koji who almost killed Konohamaru with ease and he knew where Konohamaru had scaled that fatigued Kawaki, and Naruto rightfully assumed he was the only one who could deal with what was coming next. That's a huge statement to make. I know there are people saying Rock Lee could do X, Y, and Z, but we have evidence in hindsight that backs up Naruto's claim. There is a large gap in power between base Hokage Naruto and any other Jonin you can think of in the village. We saw as much in the anime version of Ishiki's invasion. Whereas Konohamaru led the charge with the Rasengan, Choji was using his partial expansion jutsu, Kiba was beginning his fang over fang with Ten Ten and Rock Lee providing backup. Ishiki summoning via the Daikokuden knocked all of them except for Konohamaru unconscious. Naruto on the other hand casually leaps up into the air and uses a giant Rasengan and shatters the very same column that one shot all the other Jonin. No Sage Mode factored in, just base Naruto's power. Sage Mode Naruto is able to briefly push aside one of Kawaki's chakra cubes with Frog Kumite when he saved Boruto from being killed. The other reason why this is so important is that we saw in the Delta fight that we were dealing with people who are on a different level. In the manga, Naruto mixes it up with Delta for a bit and after seeing Delta possess both a Ninja Tech eye as well as other body modifications that allowed her to use her legs as Ninja Tech and then she was bragging that she had even more Ninja Tech she never showed, Naruto immediately powered up to a level beyond anything any other Konoha Jonin could ever hope to reach. And he both fought Delta first for intel and then to subdue her. Nobody else would have been fit for that encounter. Naruto's assessment will be proved correct once again with the Jigen fight where Jigen not only possessed the karma to absorb every version of Naruto's Rasengan, but also possessed the Dojutsu that could shrink something like Sasuke's Kirin, assuming Sasuke had prep time to even use Kirin and shrink any weapons that Sasuke could have made 
using the Astropath. Naruto said he was the only one who could deal with the power that's coming to the village to take back Kawaki and both car inners who came there were beyond any Jonin, especially Jigen. Whereas Kaguya's vacuum punch jutsu required four hits in the Naruto manga to destroy Sasuke's perfect Susano, a full power Jigen did it in one hit. Full power Jigen with four attacks was able to leave Naruto near death despite Naruto using six pass chakra mode and Sasuke trying more than once to use his Amena Teji card to open up attacks against Jigen with each attempt seeing Naruto and Sasuke fail to connect any hit when they tried that trickery. Naruto was the only one who had a fresh chance against Ishiki and that ultimately required burial mode. Had Naruto listened to the advice of others placing Kawaki under physical confinement with guards all around him it would have resulted in Kawaki being grabbed by Delta when she came into the village via a smashing grab and likely she would have killed a few guards along the way. Kawaki would have been back in the hands of Kar, despite Amado and Kashin Koji's plans which would have resulted in Amado and Kashin Koji dying because Jigen made it clear he already knew that they were working together to betray him and Jigen would be able to secure Kawaki as a vessel for Ishiki which would ultimately lead to Jigen feeding himself to the Tentails, Ishiki resurrecting into Kawaki's body and a chakra fruit being harvested. Honestly there's more of an argument to be made that Naruto actually saved billions which is ironic given the thumbnail that we have here which far outweighs any blood that will be on his hands for whatever future timeline that exists where Kawaki might be killing other people. That being said, I'm curious to know how you guys feel about this. Does Naruto have blood on his hands for Kawaki's future bloodlust actions or does Naruto saving the world from being harvested as a chakra fruit far outweigh this? Should Naruto feel any responsibility for Boruto having Momoshiki's coma? While you think that over, click here to watch this Naruto Explained video.